I thought long and hard about recording this one because every time you talk about food and nutrition, people just start fighting with each other from their own perspective. And the problem with that is, is there is no one size fits all diet. I don't know anyone anywhere who has left a vegan meme on Facebook and started the revolution that changed everyone's mind by arguing with people on social media. Vice versa. I don't think it works that way. Regardless of what you eat for yourself, even if you're a nutritionist, it still becomes very hard to blanket say, this is what everyone needs to be doing. This is what everybody needs to be eating. And that's the real problem here. While everyone is fighting amongst themselves over what we should be eating, we are being hardcore propagandized right now that if we don't start eating things that aren't actually food <laughs> as a species, if we don't start eating things that aren't actually food, we're not going to be able to save the planet. Planet's going to die. It's going to be all our fault if we don't all change our diets to something that is so completely unnatural. I mean, the propaganda is to the point that you have little girls playing patty cake, singing about how the world's going to end. Climate change, climate change, you're a threat. How many years do we have left? The propaganda about the world ending right now because humans is so weaponized. It's so far beyond what people in my generation had to deal with as a kid. We got Captain Planet. We're the Planeteers. You can be one too. Cause saving our planet is the thing to do. Which was ridiculous in its own right, but that's nothing compared to what I see these kids going through. They're posting pictures of little girls just bawling their eyes out because they think the world's about to end. Cause some scientists decided this time it's 12 years. You know, they, th the rest of us, aren't even moved except by the fact that we feel sorry for little kids being traumatized by propaganda. That's what we're moved by. We're not moved by the rest of it because we all know because we've been here this whole time and they only change that marker and add new years to it every so often to the point that the rest of us are numb to it. Even if they came out and had an absolute prediction and they were like, this is the day the whole planet's gonna end because you carbon emitting humans have just ruined the whole thing and it's absolutely gonna be on this day and here's all the evidence, we can prove it. They have cried wolf on this so many times, no one would believe them because the propaganda level has gotten so ridiculous. But I don't think it's a coincidence at all that at the same time that you have the UN coming out with all these reports about how the entire world needs to have this plant-based diet, and that's the phrase, plant-based, you suddenly have Wall Street salivating over the stocks going through the roof of all these quote-unquote plant-based meat alternatives. CNN even came up with an article, headline for an article that said, the Amazon is burning because people are eating meat. No, it isn't. It's not even burning because of climate change. They actually had experts come out and have to admit that in the New York Times. Do you know how much it hurts the New York Times to have to admit that the Amazon burning was not climate change? It pains them physically. They're shrieking their way all the way to the keyboard and they're painfully typing, oh, I don't wanna have to tell people this. Like they didn't wanna have to tell the people that and they actually admitted that it was not climate change. Leonardo DiCaprio came out and said, the Earth's lungs are burning in the Amazon. They even had an expert come out and say, that's bullshit. An Amazon rainforest expert came out and said, that's bullshit. And there is no science whatsoever to back that up. And that all of the oxygen that is put out by the Amazon forest is taken back up and that it's a wash. It's not the Earth's lungs burning. And all these stars came out and they were posting pictures of the Amazon supposedly burning that weren't even taken this year. And half of them weren't even taken in the freaking Amazon. So that's the point. Like everything they say about this issue, a large majority of it has been proven to be propaganda and not true. If they really want people to take this seriously, they should stop having little girls play patty cake and start telling people the truth about what's actually going on here. But they're not doing that and sorry, I'm just getting off on a whole tangent because what I got to say about this is actually way worse than all the stuff I've already said. Oh, this is driving me insane. Okay, so 
At the same time that you have all these UN reports coming out saying we need a plant-based diet, they start pushing all of these super processed, quote unquote, plant-based meat alternatives, which if you actually look at the ingredients on these things, especially the Impossible Burger, which is multiple different kinds of genetically modified soy, soy protein isolate, something that you couldn't make in your kitchen if you tried because it is such an industrial product, such a highly processed industrial product. You couldn't make that if you wanted to. Soy protein isolate is one of the most toxic ingredients they allow people to eat. It's unbelievable. There are all kinds of studies that show that it cuts sperm counts in half, that it contributes to breast cancer. Multiple studies. Studies that aren't done by the soy industry. And the bottom line is these things are processed industrial products, processed foods. Did you know that there is no anthropological evidence that diabetes existed over 100 years ago? There isn't any. It didn't start happening and becoming a huge problem until industrial processed foods became a staple in the modern diet. That's when we started seeing all of this food-based sickness. When we started eating all this stuff that is not nutritious, you got they got people, because they're using the phrase plant-based, they got people believing if they eat this product, it's essentially like eating a plate of peas. No, it's not, okay? By the time this stuff is so processed, it doesn't even resemble the plant that it supposedly came from. And we all know what the word natural means. You can slap the word natural legally on almost anything. It doesn't mean anything to put the word natural on a food product in this country, okay? But the point is, is it's not even about, I mean, yes, Wall Street is drooling over the fact that they're making hand over fist bank on all these fake meat products that they're getting everyone to eat instead of real food. But that's not even the point. The point is, they're getting everyone to have a diet that is so completely unnatural because they are changing everything about what it means to be human as society moves towards a transhuman state. And that's what you're seeing everywhere. You're seeing the symbols and signs of this all over the place. And all of these things are just a gradual movement towards a world where people are gonna be eating crisper foods and completely synthetic foods altogether that are grown in labs and petri dishes and all that. They already ruled a while back that you're not even allowed to know if you're eating cloned meat on an average grocery store shelf. And back in April, right before all these reports came out from the UN and everybody started talking about the world diet, the new, the new world diet that everyone has to have, Wired, which is a mouthpiece for this entire transhumanist agenda, they came out with a cover that had a cow on it that said, CRISPR could give us a more humane world. Will humans let that happen? And then it went on to talk about how CRISPR could make our food supply more efficient, but it's struggling to get out of the lab and onto our plates. So a step towards that is eating something that's an alternative. So the first thing they do is they get people to eat genetically modified food, then they start getting them to eat alternative food. Then they're gonna bring out synthetic food and gene edited food. And I don't think it's gonna stop until people are eating something that is not a food at all, but it has the word food on the label. And it's not gonna stop at quote unquote alternatives, okay? That's not, it's not even gonna remotely stop. Have you looked at some of the articles that CNN has been putting out lately? about how we should all just be eating insects, they are really pushing this idea that we should all start eating insects. So this is like neo-feudalism packaged in this environmentally friendly veneer, basically. That's all it is. And they're like, have you tried mealworm lasagna? Well, you're not doing your part for the environment. But it's not gonna stop there. That's the thing, it's still not gonna stop there because you have people like Bill Gates one of the wealthiest men on the planet, taking all of his wealth and what's he doing with it? He's creating machines that turn poop into water so everyone else can drink their own feces. Isn't that so nice of him? Shouldn't we all just be so thankful to Bill Gates that he sat there with all of his bajillions of dollars like Scrooge McDuck swimming through a freaking vault and, and he was like, what, what can I do with it? Oh, you know what? I will get everyone else to drink their own shit. What a what a scientist. What a Sorry, that's funny. What a what a philanthropist. 
We should all worship at his feet. <laughs> and people do. I've seen it with my own two eyes. I've been to speeches that he has given. People weep when they see him. It's sickening. But it's not stopping there either. They even had an article come out in a website called We Are The Mighty. And with the ultimate irony, talking about how DARPA is creating a machine that will turn trash into food and then the government's gonna feed garbage to the soldiers. Like a food paste made out of trash. They're gonna feed trash to the soldiers. Thank you for your service. Pull up a garbage can and get a fork. People are complaining that the VA isn't giving them enough treatment. They're feeding them literal garbage. It's so, so sick. It's so disgusting. It's gonna be a nutritional paste filled with macronutrients. Sounds exactly like the stuff they had in the Matrix. Hey, does tasty wheat taste like chicken? I don't know, ask a soldier, since they're apparently gonna make a machine to feed them literal garbage. By the way, when your employer feeds you literal garbage, maybe you wanna think about getting a different job. I'm just saying, they don't care so much about you when they're feeding you garbage. And it's in a publication called We Are The Mighty. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I can't take this anymore. It's not stopping there because like I told everybody a couple years ago, they have started promoting cannibalism. They've started trying to make cannibalism sexy. And it started with the fiction because that's how it always starts, okay? Things start in an occult fashion and then they get permeated out to the masses through the fiction, through the films and the TV shows and the books and stuff like that. And then once they get that out there for a couple years, then they come along with a scientist who starts backing it up and, re and makes it real. So it comes out of the realm of fiction and moves into the realm of fact. That's what they do, and it's a formula they do all the time. But what's crazy is, as time seems to artificially be speeding up because we have all this technology that's coming out faster and faster, and they're making it all faster and faster, stuff is happening faster and faster. So two years ago, you had all these movies and, and everything coming out, sexy teen flick with the cannibalism and how awesome that is for society to have a movie like that, glorifying cannibalism. And what do we have now? There was an article out just a couple of weeks ago in Newsweek talking about environmental issues and saying cannibalism is common in the animal kingdom. Here's why it's still the ultimate taboo for humans. You may think that's them saying, well, it's still bad for us, so that's bad. But actually, if you get to the end of the article, they straight up say, we suspect we could adapt to human flesh if we need to, you know. People say it's disgusting, but you know, morticians and surgeons, they adapt to dealing with dead bodies, so they can figure it out, we can too. And then it says, if we don't wanna have to get to that point, we should just, you know, shift to eating more plants and maybe eat some insects. So once again, pushing the idea of eating insects. So that was a couple weeks ago. <laughs> this has gotten to the point now that on September 3rd and 4th, there was actually something called the Gastro Summit in Stockholm. And there was a behavioral scientist who presented there and he had a talk entitled, can you imagine eating human flesh? So what did I say? It starts off as fiction. Then they get a scientist to come in waving that banner of science. And then what do you got? Legitimizing something, right? So they, they ease it into the conscious, into the public subconscious with the fiction then they come back it up with a scientist who can then legitimize that and make it real. And that's what they're doing with it. It's unbelievable that we are to this level as a society. People, no, I'm going to, hold on. I'm going to get through this article first. I just, <laughs> every day, you guys, every day. <sighs> so he's arguing for the breaking down of the ancient taboos against desecrating human corpses and eating flesh because he refers to these taboos as conservative. So there you go with some politically correct jargon where they're gonna pit it as a left-right issue and say that if you don't wanna eat people, if you don't wanna become a zombie, basically, you're a conservative. And we all know 
there's a whole segment of progressives who feel like that word is so weaponized that if you just use that word at all for any reason whatsoever, their heads actually burst into flames a little bit and they got to like put that out. So it's a way, it's a trigger word that's used to, to trigger half the population that they've got essentially programmed to respond to these words. And he goes on to say, and this is a behavioral scientist now, and he goes on to discuss how people's resistance to it as a problem could be overcome little by little, beginning with persuading people just to taste it. You know, just eat your grandma's finger. It's, it's probably tastes like chicken. It's probably fine. And there's apparently a presentation that was given on state Swedish television channel four, where he talked about how food is going to be scarce in the future. So I guess it's going to just be Soylent Green. Do you know they actually sell a product called Soylent now and people buy it? It's like the whole point is just right over their head. Just, hey, turn around. You might see the point flying away because you missed it. Okay. They've got people eating Soylent. They've got people playing with toys that look like poop and wearing shirts with skulls on them. This is the society. Okay. This is the tearing down and the destruction of Homo sapiens so they can bring in this new transhumanist directed human evolution version that is going to have some science diet and I guess be totally cool with just everything. There will be no taboos, there will be no social constructs, there will be no social mores. The entire moral fabric of everything having to do with society just be torn down and set on fire and run over with a truck and then exploded with a nuclear bomb. I don't know. It just, it's amazing to me what they're doing to people right now. So they're gonna take all this fear over climate change and actually try to wrap it up into, if you're afraid of this, maybe you'll do this. Maybe you'll just abandon all value systems and morals that you have as a human being whatsoever. Because if we can just break you down to your bits, we can reconstitute you in whatever way we want. This is a joke. It's a game and it's being run on everybody. And there are people out there, and I'm sad to say it, and I wish I didn't have to say it, but there are people out there who are so brainwashed by this stuff and so easily fed into this machine that they will, they probably will get on board for this too. In fact, I think this is probably one of those social tests that they do just to see and gauge public opinion. Because that's what everything is right now with the internet. All this data, a lot of these things that happen are gauging public sentiment about certain things. Like how far can we push the envelope today? Let's see if everyone gets on board for this, you know, grandma sandwich over here. And sadly, I, people are so ready to tax each other and call for taxes on certain diets and tell other people what to do. And Twitter right now is just filled with horrible images of animal, you know, abuse and stuff like that. As if every food item that's meat based is from torture which is not the way it has to be. That's the thing. You push all of the industry a certain way until it becomes horrible and tyrannical as a Hegelian dialectic to turn around and say, look how horrible and tyrannical that is. Don't you feel bad? You're the reason. I'm not the reason. I was not the one who said we should institute CAFO lots and horrifying agricultural practices that they have now instituted that are horrible to animals. We go out of our way to pay extra for responsibly sourced food. That's not the way it should be in this world. That's the way they've set it up. You have to go out of your way and pay extra to get organic food. If you want food that hasn't been sprayed with synthetic pesticides that cause all sorts of autoimmune disorders and diseases and everything else in your body, not to mention what genetic modification does, if you want to get that, you gotta pay extra for it. You know, in the real world, we wouldn't be spending all of our time trying to water the grass in our front yard. We'd be growing food in it. If this world was normal, it's not. It's the upside down now where they're gonna tell you we need to have the human flesh industry. That's what this behavioral scientist said. He said, easier, easier cells will be getting people to eat insects and pets. Getting people to eat their pets. <laughs> but he wanted to focus on human flesh because he's a behavioral scientist. He's gauging people's ability to come to terms with that concept. And he definitely took a poll at the end and at least 8% of people in his audience said they'd do it. That's 8% today. How many percent do you think that's gonna be in the future when they start making it incredibly hard to eat a normal diet? You know, the movie Soylent Green was set in the year 2022. 
What is the secret of Silent Green? And it's an old movie because it's from the early 70s at the height of the population bomb scare, which they've only been scaring people with since before I was even born. And so people always think of it as a futuristic movie, but that's not that far away. And they've got people eating Soylent, and they've got behavioral scientists giving public presentations on cannibalism. They're trying to get people to be literal zombies. I have had it with this. People need to take back their power and assert their individuality and stop getting pulled into this mass group fear of every time the media says you should be afraid because this is going to happen or some group of scientists gets together who are all funded and paid and have to be adhering to certain agendas in order to get that paycheck and they're saying something and the science is settled and the consensus is happening. We're not group animals, but they're trying to force everyone into this hive colony, <laughs> this hive mind group think. And you can see where they're trying to take this train when you have scientists coming out giving real presentation. This is not the onion. This is not a Saturday Night Live sketch. I wish that it was. People got to stop accepting that this is the reality. We are not slaves. This is not, we don't have to eat insects and garbage. They're trying to get you to live in literal fear. That's what they want. New York Times actually came out and said, climate change, it's time to be afraid. Everyone be afraid and panic. They actually said that. Normally the mainstream media wants you to be afraid, but they hide it. They at least try to be sophisticated about it and hide it inside the propaganda. But now they're so desperate to get people to be afraid. Be afraid and eat your grandma for, for the earth that they're actually putting out articles. It's time to panic. <laughs> people need to see this for what it is and laugh at how silly and ridiculous it is and then assert themselves. You do not have to go along with this agenda. You do not have to be a slave to this fear. This is ridiculous to try and make people this afraid. We don't have to live in fear. I mean, it's weird that they're trying to make everyone personally take responsibility for a system that they have now put in place that no one has any control over. You don't have personal control over it one way or the other, but getting you in a state of fear sure makes you a lot more controllable as a human being, doesn't it? a lot more susceptible to the propaganda. That's what this is. That's all it is. It's ridiculous. I just can't believe they're taking it so far to try and legitimize cannibalism. I mean, that is, that's a new low. That's a new low for society in 2019. We're coming up on the actual time period of Soylent Green, and they're talking about actual cannibalism. The movie, at least they in the movie, they were tricking people. And at least here, they're trying to tell you to your face. <laughs> so I guess in a way, it's a little bit more honest because they're at least telling you outright instead of just trying to give you Soylent Green pellets and tell you that it's plankton. You gotta tell them Soylent Green is people! I know, Kwame. Humans destroy the land. But there's something you can do that will stop more of our beautiful Earth from looking like this. Eat your grandma. Humans are yummy. Be a planeteer. Recycle. Yay! We, we do. do the power. What the hell is going on here? This is unbelievable to me that we're to this point. And they're telling people it's trendy to drink beer that was made out of feces because of the environment. You know what that is? That's earth worship. When you are worshiping the environment and you are worshiping the planet to the point that you would eat your pets and your family members, you are part of a cult now. Do you understand that? That's the other problem. History has been so far forgotten that people don't even realize they're being fed back into these cults that are coming back. They're being fed back into these cults that are coming back now. And that is what this is. Sacrifice your children to the earth. The environment has too many people. Go get an abortion. It's the same thing. And now they're going to tell you, where does it end? I mean... Miley Cyrus says virginity is a social construct and behavioral scientists saying people should eat their family members. So what now? What next? I mean, because we're on the Caligula train right now. That's what this is. And everybody needs to realize this propaganda mess for what it is and reject it.
Because if they are taking a poll on public sentiment on this, they need to see that everyone's freaking outraged and thinks this is disgusting. And beneath them, I'm done. I'm, <laughs> I'm done right now. I, I gotta go.